So let's look at pros and cons after using this NAS for a couple of months and see what is good, what is bad so far. So here comes the bad things that they could work on and improve their product in the future releases. Uh, so far is uh, about SMB shares, how you can manage uh, users that have access to SMB. Uh, you need to create those users separately, so that's a bad thing. There's no physically USB port on the NAS, so if you want to back up your um, hard drives, external hard drives, uh, or if you want to back up your NAS to external hard drives, uh, this is not something that is possible at this point. There's also a simple thing missing like power on button. You can only power it on by plugging in the power cable and if you have this NAS installed in a rack cabinet it could be a very difficult task. Especially in the future editions there will be something like power management where you can switch your NAS off uh, during the night. Switching it back on could be a problem. Other simple thing is HDD lock. Uh, there's no locking trays so if someone comes to the rack cabinet and push the tray they could easily remove it. I think these uh, trays should be locked. If someone removes two drives your data could be lost. The other option that is missing uh, is uh, multiple RAIDs. You can only have one RAID on your system. Some people might uh, want two RAIDs uh, with two different capacity drives or different purposes for security reasons for like ransomware. Uh, but this option is not available. You can only have one RAID and that RAID can be uh, basic, RAID 1, RAID 5 or RAID 10 but only one of those options. There is no RAID 6. So many people ask for RAID 6 because it is safer. Uh, Unify call RAID 10 safer but it's not exactly safer because it's a mirror. Uh, if two drives fail on the same side of the mirror your data will be gone. In RAID 6 it doesn't matter what two drives will fail, your data will be still safe. The other thing that is missing is SHR or Beyond RAID, what you would expect on uh, Drobo systems. You cannot mix two different size drives. If you do so, they will be seen as big as the smallest drive in the group. Other brands like Synology will allow you to have two different size drives and they will work out uh, the maximum available capacity for those drives. The other thing that's missing is a smart RAID rebuild. For example, Synology, uh, they'll look at those drives during the rebuild process. If you introduce new drive and you only have used a couple of gigabytes on overall storage, it will ignore the empty space on the drive that you just introduced and will quickly rebuild the RAID without chiseling zeros and ones in empty space. The other thing that is missing is a RAID uh, migration. You can't move on from RAID 5 to RAID 10 or RAID 10 to RAID 5. Uh, you'll need to format those drives to be able to do that. The only migration that is possible so far is from BASIC to RAID 1 and from RAID 1 to RAID 5. That's it. The other thing that could be added is not crucial, uh, but it could be added SSD caching. Uh, there is no NVMe slots uh, for boosting the performance of the hard drives. And also there is an option to use Hotspur drive for SSD cache or multiple bays for SSD, SATA base SSD that could boost the performance for the hard drives. That's something they could introduce in later edition. One really crucial thing that is missing, there is no mobile app for managing your NAS, for backing up your photos, videos, for synchronizing your folder like Dropbox would. Um, there is no mobile app, you need to do that through the web browser, which is very inconvenient. The other minor thing that I noticed is um, Hotspur Drive. It should be off all the time, but I noticed that it was spinning even though it's not part of the RAID. It's just standalone drive waiting for some of the drives to fail to kick in. I didn't expect it to be spinning. Very small thing about uh, name tags on LAN ports. They have a uh, tag for 10 gigabit port but uh, one gigabit port has no tag. So it's very confusing. Is it one gigabit or 10 gigabit? Obviously, if you read manual, you know what speed it has. The other option that is missing that other brands do is uh, make your CPU hurt kind of mode. When building a RAID or rebuilding a RAID, other brands will allow you to use maximum performance from the CPU or have minimum performance from the CPU, depends on the use case. Uh, sometimes you want your RAID to be rebuilt as quick as possible and you want to use maximum performance. 
there is no option for that on a uh, UNAS. I also didn't see an option to request files from people. Other brands allow you to send out a link requesting a file uploads to that particular folder. I didn't find that on UNAS. The other concern uh, is a CPU that is used in this NAS. It's ARM-based uh, CPU, which is fairly old, but um, it's too slow to have sustainable 10 gigabit speeds. I did the tests where I achieved 10 gigabit uh, speeds, but in real life situation, when you do normal file copy and paste, uh, this CPU is too weak to have uh, constant 10 gigabit speeds. The other minor thing is about uh, sign in reports, logs, where I can see that someone is trying to log into a system, but it doesn't say where exactly the sign in is from. Is it from the same building, same uh, city, or is it same country? I do not know these things. All, the, all I see is an IP address. That would be easier to uh, raise uh, alert if there is someone trying to sign in from another uh, location. The other feature that is not that important, but uh, could be very useful for the product is uh, ability to install Docker. They don't need to think about their own apps in this case. If a Docker was available, uh, people could turn this NAS into multimedia center, backup suite, IoT a solution, anything that you can think of. Other people have raised concerns about Active Directory. It uh, seems to be very difficult to integrate this NAS into Active Directory, but I guess this is gonna be resolved uh, very soon. Another crucial thing is actually expansion. You cannot add another NAS uh, to this existing NAS to expand the storage space. The only way to expand storage, you'll need to put bigger drives in there. But I think in a business environment, you will want to stack up a couple of these NASs to have a combined storage space. Okay, let's move on to good stuff. And it's price. Uh, it costs $500, 500 pounds to have a seven bay NAS which is 10 gigabit enabled. It's an incredibly good price compared to what's available in the market right now. The setup process for this NAS is super easy. All you need is a phone with a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. You can choose uh, how to connect to this NAS, it's up to you. But all it takes, a couple of clicks and you have added this NAS to your Unified ecosystem. Super easy. And I also have to mention, it looks nice. It has a silver finish, metallic uh, chassis, it looks great. I also have to mention it's a really quiet NAS. Rack mount NASs usually are very loud because of their fans, but they managed to make it fairly quiet. I could not even hear those fans. Actually, the Dream Machine is louder than the NAS. The other good thing is compatibility. You can put in any SATA-based hard drives in this NAS, you're not locked to their ecosystem like Synology is now forcing everyone to do and overcharge people. The, there are a few exclusions because some of the drives are bigger than the tray size, but those drives are listed on uh, their website. But otherwise, all SATA-based hard drives will work with this NAS. There's something that other brands do not offer and it is touch screen panel on the front of the NAS. Not only you can see what's the remaining capacity on the drives, what the error is, uh, what's the status, what's the IP address, all those things. You can also control the NAS. You can shut down, restart, do certain things with the NAS. It is great that you don't need to log into admin panel. Everything can be done from your touch screen. Perfect. The other thing that I already mentioned is Bluetooth. You can set up this NAS using your mobile phone through the Bluetooth connection. You don't need Wi-Fi or anything like that. You can do it locally. Unify recently also released their uh, Unify Drive, which is an app which will automatically mount your SMB share. So whenever you leave office with your laptop, you come back, it will automatically detect the NAS in the local network and mount it back. So you never need to think about redoing the mounting process. Also adding drives is so easy on this NAS. So if you started with just one drive, you can just slide in another drive, it will automatically switch into RAID 1 mode. If you slide in the third drive or fourth or fifth, it will automatically add that drive to a RAID and uh, change from RAID 1 to RAID 5. The only thing that I need to mention, you need to make sure those drives have no data on, on them. Otherwise, you will need to log into the admin panel and uh, 
confirm that you want to delete the existing data on the drive. But it's a, if it's a brand new drive with nothing on it, it will be automatically added to the RAID. Also, hard drive trace. I have to mention there's no other brand that allows so easily to install those hard drives in those trays. It's simply clip in a solution. It's better than Snorge and QNAP where you have to have these straps uh, pushed in. This one is an even better solution. RAID rebuild, that's also what's so very simple with UNAS. Uh, all you need to do is slide the new drive in and it will automatically rebuild it. With QNAP or Synology, you need to go into their admin panel and then choose which drive you want to replace, the are you sure you want to replace. It's difficult and sometimes you need to ask IT person to do these things. Uh, with UNAS, you just replace the drive and you're good to go. Changing a RAID is also very easy. All you need to do is go to admin panel and select from a drop down do you want to have RAID 5 or RAID 10 and click OK. That's it. You don't need to think about terms like what is storage pool, what is volume, none of that you need to care about. We just go in there and say, okay, I want to drive protection. That's it. I also mentioned uh, switching from RAID 1 to RAID 5 is straightforward. There's nothing you need to do. If you have two drives, add the third one, it will start RAID 5 automatically. Having a hot spare drive, that's very handy as well. So you don't need to technically have all those drives um, wearing out. You can have this seventh drive uh, standalone, waiting for any of the drives to fall apart. The spare drive will automatically replace the broken drive and the rebuild process for the RAID can start. Snapshots, also something very useful for those um, worried about ransomware or accidental data deletion. With snapshots, you can go back to previous version of a folder or a file and your data is safe. Encryption, also something useful. Uh, you can have your data encrypted if you want to. Time machine support, also a handy feature. You can easily back up your Mac computer to this UNES Pro. Everything is already pre-configured for you to use. And the last and the minor thing is a reset button in the front. If uh, ever you need to reset that NAS, you don't need to get at the back of the NAS to do so. It's simple and available at the front. I'm interested in more about this particular NAS, I have a few more videos uh, that go through admin panel, all the features that are available. Uh, it also answer top questions that people have about this NAS. And I also have a four part series, uh, how to upgrade your network to 10 gigabit. So in those four videos, you'll see how I upgraded my uh, mini PC using M.2 converter to 10 gigabit connection. Uh, uh, how I tested different sort of cables, how I tested different uh, RAID types. So basically you will see me experimenting all sorts of things to achieve maximum speed using this uh, NAS because I was curious, is it possible to achieve 10 gigabit speeds or not? So you can see me testing all sorts of things in those videos.